What's up, guys? Welcome back to Newswave. Do you remember a few years ago, we had Game Vice suing Nintendo over patent infringement because of the way their weird device looked similar, I guess, to them, to the Joy-Cons? Well, we do have a conclusion to that entire case. It just took a few years, and turns out it didn't really go the way Game Vice wanted it to. We'll go over that today. Also, we have to go over an insane report that is out there right now. Broke last night, multiple sources seem to be claiming that Silent Hill will be making a comeback, a return, and Sony is going to be the one getting it done. Yeah, yeah, crazy stuff. We're gonna go over that. And then also Animal Crossing has now leaked out into the wild, so I'll keep you guys up to date there as well as we go forward, uh, just to keep you guys in mind. No, no spoilers or anything, obviously, but it is worth knowing that it is out there, so you might run into them. As always, guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton, and if you're brand new here, hit that red subscribe button down below as we head towards 400,000 subscribers. And we're gonna start today with that Lego Super Mario collaboration. We had talked about it previously when they put out that preview trailer. No information at the time had been given, but we did get another trailer no real release date or pricing or even how all of it works, but uh, well, here's, here's the trailer here. It is indeed a Super Mario Lego set, kind of like we were thinking. There was always the possibility that it could have been a game as well, like a video game, but it seemed that Lego was promoting it heavily, so most likely it would have been just a physical Lego set, and it is. This one looks a bit more advanced, like Mario Blinks. <laughs> That's... That's not strange, right? That, that, that won't creep people out. Yeah, Mario has actually the ability to do all kinds of very interesting things. I'm not really sure how all of it is working. People are starting to dissect the trailer, but we're expecting this to release later on this year anyway, so we'll find out then. But hey, it at least looks like a lot more than just a basic Lego set that you would buy. It really looks quite, quite complex. So interesting stuff there. I'm sure there are a lot of people looking forward to really getting their hands on it and seeing how it all works and how, how fun it is. But there's also a chance of other sets coming out down the road. Like I said, you could always have like a Legend of Zelda set. That would be cool. Or a Super Metroid set. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of possibilities there. Also, here's a bit of random news. Do you remember Blade Runner from back in the late nineties on PC? It was like a point and click adventure game. That's coming back. Yeah. Night Dive is bringing it back. They they also did Turok, which is a great port on the Switch. I remember really enjoying that on the Xbox as well. They are bringing it to current platforms as well as Steam as seemingly an exclusive. That's taking place later on this year. We're still waiting for a release date and pricing and all of that. They did announce that the Blade Runner Enhanced Edition was coming this year. And you know what? That is pretty cool. I don't remember playing it that much back when it came out, but I remember seeing it on, and I'm not kidding, <clears throat> store shelves, yeah, because we used to buy PC games at the stores, but at the time, I remember really wanting Dark Forces 2, I think, Jedi Knight, and that's what I was trying to get my hands on, that was the late 90s as well. I just remember seeing them both next to each other on the shelves, and I grabbed that one, but I played Runner was pretty popular back then as a point-and-click adventure, and people got really excited when they saw this online, so really, really neat to see Night Dive go back and grab these classics. I'll be curious to see how that translates over to a controller, and maybe they'll use, like, the, the gyro settings on the on the switch for example that would be kind of neat but look forward to more information especially if you remember blade runner see it make a comeback in 2020 oh and yesterday we had talked a bit about e3 of course and plans post e3 since there's not going to be one all the studios are, are kind of scrambling publishers are trying to figure out what they're going to do square also released yesterday a statement kind of showing what, or at least trying to explain what their plans were and what they're gonna try to do, saying, as the world is echoed and united, nothing is more important than protecting the health and well-being of our employees and their families, our partners, and unquestionably our fans. We support the ESA's decision to cancel E3 2020 and send our strongest heartfelt appreciation to everyone that works tirelessly to bring unforgettable games and experiences to E3. We understand this is disappointing not only to our respective developers and publishers, but also to thousands of fans who venture from afar to celebrate games at E3. We're right there with you. Our 2020 lineup and the next generation that lies beyond is stronger than ever for Square, where E3 has always been an incredible moment in time to showcase our upcoming games. We're exploring other options to share our games with you. More to come, stay tuned. So I read that right away as Square Direct, Square Enix Direct. 
I like the sound of that. Last year, they had a, a pretty good showing. I enjoyed it quite a bit. We saw, of course, uh, the Final Fantasy VII remake, a nice, nice playthrough of that. That was pretty good. Saw some gameplay. Of course, also saw Final Fantasy VIII, all kinds of other games. And while the Avengers game, not really sold on it. It was still there. They had a good showing. So I think they could pull off their own direct, especially some next generation stuff in there. Interesting. That's that's the one thing I, I thought about with E3 is that's when we would have we would have seen a ton of next generation stuff in one shot. Now it could be kind of scattered. So uh, keep an eye on Square though. I think we're just gonna get a full on live stream and some pretty cool stuff. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start with this Game Vice versus Nintendo. We've been talking about this for, yeah, years now. I remember we talked about it when it first happened and it was kind of a laugh because most of us saw this as patent trolling. They they thought they could get a nice little payday from it is how pretty much all of us viewed it because the idea here is that Nintendo was copying off of Game Vice with their detachable controllers that really didn't look that, I mean, the the overarching idea, sure, detachable controllers from the side of a system, but they were producing controllers that were mostly used for tablets and cell phones, not really like their own system, and they didn't even really function similarly. It was, it just, it looked off. So most of us figured, oh, Game Vice is looking for that, that payday from Nintendo. They just, they forgot about something. Nintendo doesn't really get into that. They don't they don't like losing in the courts. And generally, I, I yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, Nintendo's gonna obviously push back on. We saw them go after ROM sites. And usually I'm not that excited about a big company taking down uh, everything they see, right? Like, I'm like, uh, okay, wow, the, the multi-billion dollar company got another one, yeah. But in this case, yeah, it was patent trolling, I think. So it's it's funny to see Game Vice get kind of smacked down here by Nintendo. So gamesindustry.biz posted up a good article kind of summarizing this from Law360, saying the patent trial and appeal board has invalidated all 19 of Game Vice's claims against Nintendo, saying Game Vice does not contest Nintendo, showing that these dependent claims are unpatentable, nor does Ga Game Vice offer any other argument or evidence in support of patentability. Now, Game Vice appears to be looking to appeal again, but I mean, I think it's over at this point, right? I mean, Game Vice took a shot and it just didn't work out. They just, they just wasted a couple years at that point, right? And maybe that was their one big shot because to be honest, had anyone really heard of Game Vice that much up until they attempted to sue Nintendo? I didn't. I mean, maybe, maybe someone out there used their accessory for their phone, but it didn't really come up until they decided to uh, go after Nintendo for something that wasn't really that obvious to any of us. Again, most of us looked at it and said, all right, sure, Game Vice, good luck with that. And it just strung out for so long, and it probably cost Game Vice a good bit of money to be in the courts that long to try to make this happen. And the fact that Nintendo, once again, stands up in court and knocks them down. It, maybe to Nintendo it was more or less, well, we're definitely not gonna pay them because that would be us admitting. Like, they didn't even try to settle. They were just like, yeah, we'll take them out, and then that could set an example for anyone else who tries to do this going forward with patents that are, I mean, it was so it was so universal the idea of detachable controllers. Can you really patent that and have another company not do detachable controllers to the side? Not really. So there you go. It was decided. 19 claims, by the way, all of them denied. Wow. There you go. Nintendo takes down another one this time. Game Vice. Next up, let's talk about this crazy report. I mean, seriously, I saw this and I, I okay. So we had heard about this before. This isn't a new rumor. And it, there have been a lot of sources around the idea of Silent Hill making a return in some way. There were just some puzzle pieces missing. And this report with several sources that I, I we should still consider technically a rumor, but it is spreading. And some of these things have been heard of before is what I will say. I do think something is happening with Silent Hill. So there's that. My question is, how do they get there? And I think that's more or less what this report is trying to explain, again, from sources familiar with the situation. We'll see if it continues to, uh, it's an ongoing thing. We'll see if it continues to uh, to evolve with more information. But let's talk a bit about this, because this tweet came out from Rely on Horror. You can see it says, we have learned from multiple sources that a Silent Hill series reboot and Silent Hill's revival are both in the works by Sony. The reboot is helmed by is helmed by former Team Silent and possibly even Project Siren members. But, okay, so Project Siren members would be interesting to see that happen. That's almost like a bit of a reunion almost for, for the people who went from Silent Hill to try to, to then go make uh, Project Siren. It was a whole thing. But to think about them packing a bunch of talent together, getting Sony 
let's be real, that could be a big time PS5 exclusive for them if, if that is the direction they are going. That would be pretty crazy to see them reboot Silent Hill and take a shot at it. I assume if this were to happen, Konami would be more or less licensing the property out to get it done, especially if Sony would be kind of looking after the development and of course providing probably majority of the funding, which means it would stay, of course, exclusive to Sony. And that could be a PS5 slash PlayStation VR 2 kind of exclusive. That would make sense. Horror games do very well with VR and that's a good use for it. And keep in mind, we covered that patent where the PS5 controller could possibly read your heart rate or how much you're sweating. That seems to tie in perfectly as well. But then we get to the second game, Silent Hills being revived or PT, the demo that just won't go away. We, everyone love, people love that demo so much. They remake it in everything they can. Unreal Engine, right? Uh, then we just saw it remade in Dreams. It's, it's insane. So if they came back, they got Kojima on board with Sony, who apparently, according to this source, it, Sony's kind of the, the middleman trying to work this out between them, mediate. Would that blow up the internet? Would that be such a big deal if the internet would just go insane and go crazy? Yeah, I think so. Mostly because, seriously, the, the bad blood between Kojima and Konami at the time when they split, it was it was pretty bad. Like, And it wasn't even just like, oh, it was all Konami's fault. There are talks that Kojima was kind of difficult to work with at the time as well, so it was on both ends. But I do look at Konami in the way that he, they treated him, and it was like, uh. But if you think about it, that would be an insane, that would be something that no one see coming, right? Like if this didn't get out and let's say this all comes to fruition during the PS5 reveal event and they walked out, they showed Silent Hill, a reboot, and then they said Silent Hills is also coming back, that would be a massive, massive shock. As of now, this is a report and a rumor with multiple sources, but it's something we've heard of before and I have to say, the reason I'm including it here is because I, I can't quite write it off because I've heard of some of this stuff too. So we'll see, but this could be a game that maybe is in that PS5 reveal, that event where they show off several games, because that would be a big time exclusive to have. We'll just have to see, but who knows? Maybe we could see Silent Hill making some sort of comeback in the next year or so. Next up, let's talk about Animal Crossing New Horizons. That's out, of course, next Friday, right alongside Doom. So just a week to wait now, getting excited, right, to pick those up. And of course, it leaked online. Go figure, right? Now, I'm not gonna show you any of the screenshots that are getting out there. Apparently, the whole thing's even been data mined. Here is a tweet that was put out, and I, I can say that this is going around that it has been data mined, but here's the first instance that I saw, and then after looking around, was able to mostly confirm it. it says, attention, Animal Crossing New Horizons had been completely data mined, and the info throughout the game has been compiled through various ways. If you prefer not to be spoiled, please be cautious. However, I will not be sharing this info as this counts as a leak. Now, the screenshots that are going around currently appears to be uh, from, uh, from France or Switzerland. There have been multiple reports as to where it could be from, but it is something that has, I guess, broken street date. Now, several different screenshots are being posted up to prove it. So yes, Animal Crossing is out there. Now, I do wonder how much can be spoiled. Animal Crossing takes a long time to play through, People are still playing uh, playing the 3DS New Leaf version with no problem and still finding new stuff. So I don't think anything too crazy is going to leak out, but I guess if you don't want to see what maybe happens as you build up your island, whether it is um, some sort of events that take place or maybe items that are found, that might be something you want to avoid. But I know there's also a lot of people out there hungry for Animal Crossing information. So, uh, you know, if you just kind of wander around the internet, you'll probably run into it, especially on Twitter going into next week. Now, they say it's been data mined. If that image leaks online, then it's, that's it. You're gonna see it all over the place because we saw what happened with Pokemon after that leaked out, footage was everywhere. So, you know, get the blinders on if you wanna, if you wanna kind of stay away from spoilers because they will be out there. If you see a thread that says Animal Crossing New Horizon spoilers inside, Take it literally. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about Ubisoft remembering that they have Prince of Persia. It's coming back. It's actually out now. It's in For Honor. Yeah, I know. It's. 
I, I, it, <laughs> it was frustrating to see that because I, I saw Prince of Persia and I immediately got excited. Then you read the rest of the headline and it's like, is coming to For Honor in a special limited event. It's gonna be running through April 2nd and essentially what'll happen is you'll see the character from Prince of Persia spawn in different parts of the map as you are playing For Honor and then he'll just come in and just kind of mess you up basically. That's okay. Well, at least Ubisoft is showing that they remember that they have Prince of Persia. That's good, I guess. Although people were commenting that it doesn't look the greatest, uh, but I mean, it's a character model inside For Honor. It's not necessarily a character model inside a an entirely designed Prince of Persia game. I would like to see Ubisoft do something with that. Maybe go back to the basics with Sands of Time because that is still my favorite Prince of Persia game. It is amazing. You can still play it now and I think it's a great time. My problem is Ubisoft and these, uh, these live service games, I think Prince of Persia would end up looking very similar to what Assassin's Creed looks like. And I don't even know, I don't really want that. So unfortunately, unless Ubisoft all of a sudden remembers that they don't have to have every single game, have you go to a destination, climb a radio tower to see rest, the rest of the map and then grind away with experience unless you buy an experience booster. Do, do I really want them touching the classics? Not a lot, not really. Oh, unless they do like a Prince of Persia remaster where they take the first three and put those in like a package for like the Switch or the Xbox PlayStation. I'd be on board with that, that'd be cool. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This one is from L. L. Cheshire saying, oh man, Bethesda doing a pre-recorded video instead of live presentation will prevent them from having those noisy paid audience members. I don't know if that's good or bad. Hey, you know what, at this point, if I'm, if I'm doing that and I'm Bethesda, I'm just gonna pay some of the employees to sit in the front there during a pre-recorded thing and just cheer at the at the TV while we record that. Now, they could put in like a laugh track or like an applause track or something just to mess with us. Uh, yeah, that whole thing was really bad. And that did kind of come back to the fact of, did we need these live presentations when we were going to have crowds that we weren't 100% sure if they were paid or off or not. A lot of us think that they were, although I was told that they just had an open bar like beforehand and people just, Got people. People uh, got a little crazy with it. We'll say that's at least the explanation I was given by people who were there. But it does also bring into the the idea of a pre-recorded section is just it just flows better because you won't have interruptions or madness happening. But then a lot of people like kind of the spontaneous nature of that as well. Eh, maybe they'll just do both. They'll just tape a live audience while they are talking. That's more controlled. Uh, We'll see, but uh, it's sounding more and more like we're gonna need a bunch of directs from all of these companies, and I actually like the sound of that. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button, it really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether it is the, the craziness of Silent Hill getting revived, a reboot, and Silent Hills coming back with Sony trying to make all of this happen, maybe for a PS5 exclusive. I, I assume that's that's the, the play here, is to get that done. Let me know what you think of the odds of that, and, that is something that could be happening there. Also, what do you think about Animal Crossing leaking out early? Keep you know keep an eye out for that. Be careful out there. And then Nintendo kind of smacking down Game Vice. And then Ubisoft remembered they have Prince of Persia just so that they could put Prince of Persia into For Honor. Great. Thanks guys for watching. Have a great weekend. I'll see you back here Monday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern time for Newswave.